Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of TFT Hyperroll with Artark. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff. Here's the graphic. Yep, you know what to do. Let's get right into this one because this is this was just a fun game. It's a build I've shown you before, but this game was a little bit special. It's always special, I guess, when it starts off with a spatula because now you have a lot of possibilities of where to go and other things you can create. Glancing at our first set of augments, I'm not in love with these, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll them since it's at least the gold level. Little Torn, quick draw heart could be fun, but there's four quick draws in the game, so you really don't need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab Thrill of the Hunt instead, because if we're going to do a quick draw build as it feels like it's leading me with giving me Ezreal's and Lucian's at the start, then the Thrill of the Hunt is going to help because they're gonna do a lot of damage. Now, from what I have found, Quick Draw is going to work best with Infiniteam. And as you can see, we have the makings of it with the spatula and the sword. So we can get a full Infiniteam with this team and full Quick Draw, which can be really, really strong. So I decided to give into the temptation of making the early emblem. I normally don't like to do that. I like to see if I'm going to get an additional spatula to maybe make a tactician's crown but i just decided to go for it i was gonna go infiniteam quick draw and see how it goes having that extra player helps so much early i only tend to like when it's in the front line a little bit better than the back line because the weakness to me for infiniteam is the front line is not that strong on its own with that said, for the item selection, we're gonna go ahead and grab the Giant's Belt so we can put a Warmogs on Pantheon. That will at least tank him up a bit and hold back whatever's going to get into our back line before it can. And that should help hold things up because our whole goal here is just to, uh, well, really hold on until we get into later game. Once you get to the five or seven Infinite Team and the four quick draws, it gets ridiculous. And since a large part of this team relies on later game champs, Misfortune, and the five cost Ezreal, I decide to go ahead and grab the champion duplicator because I will need it later on to really finish off the end game. One thing I do like in Infiniteam is if you notice, Ezreal always seems to end up with an appropriate item. It doesn't just give him some random item. It seems to give you items that fit the general concept of the champion. Ezreal's an AD champion, it gave him a jeweled gauntlet. If it had been a frontline champion, you would have had more tanky items on it. It's time for our second set of augments, and we have hero augments. And since it is the two cost, and I feel like I have a good chance of getting the artifact one, I'm going to roll and look for raider spoils. This one will allow Ezreal to give an artifact to a neighboring champion at the beginning of every single combat. That's going to be very powerful as we go on. We can also bring in our next Infinity member, and that will take us up to five since we made Ezreal one and we get a front line and a back line. So once again, let's just glance at the items. Pantheon is a tank, got a ZZ Rot and a Bramble's Vest. Lucian is an AP champion, got a Rabadon's Death Cap and an Archangel Staff, so the items they choose for the Infina Team champions seem to fit what they're doing, and I think that works really well for this. The Carousel gave us a Tome of Traits, which I didn't really need because I am pretty set, but I will take a Defender Emblem. Since Shen is a Defender, that will allow us to turn Pantheon into a Defender as well. Normally, I might have gone for Ramus, but I'm not 100% sure he's going to stay, and I'd rather have Pantheon just a little bit tankier. And I found a Misfortune, who is our third quick draw, so Ramus got pulled out, at least for now. He may go back in later. It'll depend on how everything goes out. But we're now at the five Infiniteam, three quick draws. We just need one more quick draw to complete that, and we're well on our way to getting it. This team is really strong with a duelist, Hacker Belveth. So she's going to be attacking fast and gaining more health back. So that is going to be very, very hard to beat, especially after they chew through our front line because the back line of Infiniteam, well, it just isn't that strong. It's time for our final augment and I decide to go with Portable Forge because I'm already getting one artifact. So this will give me a chance for two. Manazane on Misfortune. 
I just love that combination because then she casts right on top of her other cast. First thing we have to do is get some things off the bench and I just love piling mana items on Misfortune and what is ultimately going to make this so sinister in the end is that once we can get the other Ezreal, then we are going to have all kinds of stuff flying across this screen. We are very close to a three-star Pantheon and potentially even a three-star Sivir, but I really want to get that front line shored up a little bit more because giving time for our back line to cast is going to be key. You're going to see here, well, Misfortune misses her ult just a tiny bit, but does not have enough time to get another one off, so we suffer a defeat there. And once more, we are going to fall into a so close yet so far. We move Sivir over into the Infinite Square in the back because she's a little bit more powerful. But the real power of this team is going to be Misfortune. We need her to hit everything, but nope, Jin can get her down and we're at one life left. It's time to make some item choices. And since I want to shore up the front line, I go ahead and grab the locket as the best option here. I can put it on Ramus and he will then help shield everyone in that line. But I also have a twisted fate I can pick up. Well, first, let me grab the next item, which will go ahead and grab the giant slayer so we can be adding in some damage. I'd like to have Twisted Fate in the back line because that is just more damage going out and if Ramus can hold up the front line, that will really help. Now this is also really the choice where you're deciding whether you're going 3 or 4 quick draw. I passed on a Kaisa before because I knew I needed the front line more than I needed the additional quick draw at that point. Normally the build is 5 Infinitine and 4 quick draw, but since I can go to the 7 Infinitine, I'd have to reduce the front line by just the one to get the four quick draw. So I feel I'm better off with the seven infinite team and three quick draw. And hopefully that will work out because the front line will stay strong. But here's the moment that made this game so much fun. We actually got a chance to get a three star gold misfortune. Haven't done that before. And that extra star, oh, what a difference it makes because Misfortune is able to wipe a team really quickly. The thing that saves Viego is his Zonias and his Ox Force, but not for long because Misfortune just ults him to death. And now we got our Ezreal, so we have the full seven infinity. My main concern is still the front line, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Warmogs, so I'm shoring that up. I thought I was going to need the champion duplicator for Ezreal, but nope. We went ahead and got our two-star Ezreal, who's going to be standing on the Infini Square. And we're going to keep the other Ezreal close to him so he additionally gets the artifact, which is why I'm not picking up additional items for him. Bramble Vest onto Ramus, making him really good. And this should do it. And normally I don't go regular speed until after the top four, but at high speed, this one will just be a little too much to watch because there's going to be a lot of ulting all at once and the team is going to just, well, disappear. Because between Ezreal and Misfortune, nothing stands a chance here. And again, let's just enjoy the silly at regular speed. Everything's progressing kind of normally. It looks like whatever's going to happen, happen. And then all the ults go off. Their team pretty much just disappears from the board. And now we are into the top four. Now I've run into teams using this build with similar impact a couple of times and I can't begin to tell you how frustrating it is because you think you're doing well and then your team just starts to vanish in front of you and you don't quite know what did it because the attacks are coming from every direction at once and suddenly it's a 1v1. Between a three-star Misfortune and a two-star Ezreal, and he ends up with the Collector at the end, which means anyone below 12% who gets hit by his ult is going to go down, and Misfortune's going to be knocking out people at 15. Well, yeah, it's just complete chaos and over really fast, and GG to everyone. Hope you enjoyed this wacky video and game, and as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.